Well, I think it's imperative for brothers like myself and you to attach to the young men in the community. And maybe we might not have the type of funding that we may need to teach it at a young age, but do it regardless, do it at the parks, do it now we have the internet. So reach out to those children, reach out to those elementary schools in our community, especially the so-called urban communities where the teachers look like us and offer, how can I say, offer our services. You know, always talk to the children passing by. And for me, it's being seen. gentlemen all across the globe we want to say love truth peace freedom and justice it's your brother a right day and i have an illustrious guest with us today um and this is one of the first episodes that we're going to start the journey and talk about you know some of the personal uh journeys of those here at the bbt and how they may have come into a knowledge of self and you know what led them here and kind of maybe what pitfalls or some things that they may be able to share with us that you know can guide us along our way that we don't have to encounter amen so we're going to we're going to start that way and it's going to be a free-flowing conversation you know candid and you know just making sure that you know we resonate with you wherever you are maybe in your walk right so i'm gonna jump right in with our guest today and it is none other then the Grand Sheik Kari Ibn Goodman El Bay of the Holy BBT Science Temple and School. Greetings, Sheik. How are you today? Man, I'm doing amazing, Noble. How about yourself, man? Gratitude for having me, man. And it's just an honor and a privilege to be here, man, on your stage and speak up on how, you know, we came into knowledge of self, a beautiful journey. Islam, Islam. So I just want to first just give a brief introduction, um, Sheik Kari. Uh, so Grand Sheik Kari Ibn Goodman Al Bay is a revered, a revered spiritual leader and an esteemed head of the Holy BBT Temple, known for the dedication to promoting health, wealth, and spiritual enlightenment. Grand Sheik Kari um, has played a pivotal role in fostering positive change within the Moorish American community. Um, and he comes with a whole list of uh, academic uh, achievements uh, that he will share um, as we get get to going. But I also wanted to just highlight briefly, um, I know we spoke about our journey to get to where we are today uh, as far as uh, gaining a knowledge of self and even what that is embodying. Um, but as I spoke about, uh, Sheik is the head of BBT which is the Bernie Bush Tabernacle Science Temple and School. So I'll give a, just a brief highlight of what the BBT uh, embodies. So that way you just have a little preface about that, right? So the Holy BBT ministry under the guidance of Grand Sheik Kyrie uh, adopts a holistic approach that encompasses both physical health and financial well-being. The emphasis is on achieving a balanced and prosperous life teaching nationality and divine creed. Members of the Holy BBT Temple are encouraged to proclaim the nationality and divine creed. This teaching aims to instill a sense of identity, belonging, moving away from historically imposed labels to embrace a free national name, which ultimately is dealing with redemption and spiritual renewal. So I just wanted to put that out there as a preface uh, for anybody that may have questions and thoughts in the comments, they can they can add on there. But Sheik, again, welcome. And I just want to start off by uh, you really kind of giving us your educational background first, and then we'll kind of like rewind, you know, how you got there. Uh, but I just wanted to be sure that people uh, understand 
um, you know, your journey through academia um, as well, um, before you even, um, you know, after years, during your journey into the knowledge yourself. Gratitude, Noble Alonzo. Well, first, um, what really, really persuaded me and pushed me to get into academia and learn is my father. I always saw my father being a professional in business. And in our home, he always stressed one thing that's going to help you is your education. Your education is going to help you no matter where you go, no matter who you deal with. Your knowledge and your language and your expertise of just on regular life and business and spirituality is going to help you. So my spiritual and my education journey came from home. So one thing my dad always said, if you don't know what type of education you want to get far as higher education, study business because your life is a business. So I went to a college called a clear university in, um, in Michigan, which is one of the hardest business schools. And I went in and got my uh, bachelor's in business management with a minor in marketing and sales and nonprofit business startup. As I got my degree in business, you know, I thought I was going to go on Wall Street and things like that. I was, you know, really noble pursuing money, but I was also brought up right. in spirituality, right. understanding God and man. And I was going to go get my uh, master's degree in mm. business to actually learn how to be a financial advisor. But the Holy Spirit came to me was like, that's fine and dandy, but that's not going to make you happy. And so I wanted to learn more to be able to minister to my people. So I said, I want to go get me an advanced degree in Christian leadership and spirituality and linguistics. And that took me to Grand Canyon University where I got my dual master's degree in first century history and religion with a minor in marketing and sales. And here we are today. Mm -hmm. Islam, Islam. That definitely is, you know, it's a lot of um, to unpack there. And, you know, we have gratitude for you for just going through that, you know, that academic journey and that step to see really come out on the other side and show us what it is and uh, a lot of things that we may have not experienced going through academia and, and what have you so gratitude for that um but let's backtrack for a second though so you, you mentioned at that time where you were you were you got the education really early inside the home um so your mom and your dad played a lot or a huge part in you really beginning to learn about yourself and your spirituality. Can you speak to that? Absolutely, Noble. Um, in my household, I can I can go back in retrospect when just my mother and my father, I grew up in the science called IDMR, which is the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, where I grew up as a kid knowing that I wasn't Negro, Black, and colored, that I was a child of God. In our home, we spoke of these things. I can pull up pictures and I share pictures on Instagram where behind me, my parents had a full library at home. And every time I asked my mother a question or what this means, she said, go pick up the dictionary, go get this book. Hmm. And so my mother always had books like a lot of us today. Now we start, we just start hearing about John Henry Clark and Dr. Ben and Ivan Van Sertema and all those scholars and Dr. Francis mm -hmm. Quirles Wilson. Well, my mother and father, they introduced that stuff to me when I was little. And I and I start and as I got into the science of self, Noble Alonzo, I went back home and started picking up those books. It was like it's talking about Moors, it's talking about Moors. As I start seeing lectures, my dad showing me of, of of John Henry Clark and Dr. Ben, I said they talking about Moors. And then what really intrigued me, Noble, is when a lot of my college professors knew who Noble Drew knew who Noble Drew Ali was, because they were Masons, and so. My whole upbringing at home, asking those specific questions and just being able to have those, how can I say that dialogue with my mother and my father at an early age has gotten me to this point today. Islam. So like a lot of, you know, I, I can say, so from friends, friends and family members, when we are talking about like being homeschooled or, maybe given a certain type of instruction on coming up, that very thing may be lacking, right, in the home. And we have to venture out into the world kind of trying to figure it out, you know, try to put the pieces together as you as you as you will, you know, ourselves. So in 
you receiving, you know, a type of teaching in the house about who you were, what you were connected to, and and what profound, you know, pride you gained from that. As you were learning that and you started to grow up and you started to see how Sai was different than what your parents was explaining or some of the children and friends that you was meeting didn't have that kind of thing. So how, how was how how did you balance what you were learning in home? versus what was going on in the street and the world around you? <laughs> wow, that's an amazing question, Obi. You know what? It was difficult. It was very, very difficult because mm -hmm. you know, just like a lot of us in our communities, most of our parents grew up in the so-called Christian church. A lot of our, or some of them were right. al-Islam. And so the knowledge of self right. was a hard thing to bring about to your friends and to your family. You know, they didn't really have a clear understanding of what it meant to know self. So for me as a young man, it brought, how can I say, a lot of, I have to be honest, when I was young, it brought a lot of confusion. Cause when I was young, I really didn't know who I was per se, because I did a lot of things that, you know, we do at young kids. We call it, uh, 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 how can I say, useful indiscretions per se. And so, it brought a lot of distance. It brought a lot of questions to who I am and not only who I am, but who my friends and who my family is. So for me, it brought a lot of separation and it brought a lot of questions. Like I always challenged in school, which my mother and father always told me, if what we taught you at home, if you get in trouble at school, we are here to defend you. So I always brought up different perspectives in school when I had to write certain papers, my upbringing. And anytime that the teachers or, or the professors or anybody walking life said that something was wrong or something wasn't valid, I had my mother and my father to come and defend me. Now, nah. gratitude, sheep, gratitude for that. Gratitude, gratitude. Appreciate that 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 response. I'm gonna follow up the question with, you know, once you kind of went out into the world as you were growing up with with the information that was taught at home, and you went out in the world and you received the kind of like a little bit of backlash in a sense and how you view things from your perspective. And how did that did that affect you at any in any way? about like how you related to other people and how they related to you? Well, I, I'll say yes and no. Uh, in a way that it showed me that a lot of our, how can I say, own people, far as melanated people, really, we don't study. And we deal with a lot of, how can I say, uh, he say, she say. So a lot of things be told to us from a, a unaged, from an uneducated perspective. And we get a lot of our teachings and things from TV. I saw that a lot in my makeup. I saw that a lot in my younger years, where how I explained earlier that um, when I was in school, I used to get in trouble for uh, speaking truth. And my parents always told me, whatever they taught me, if it was right, if I got in trouble at school, they would come and defend me because what they taught me at home need to be heard. And so it always was a clash when they would tell you something at school that was right. And I knew it wasn't right because my parents taught me and actually showed me it. And so I was able to challenge certain things when they say you a kid, you shouldn't challenge your uh, uh, elder or someone older than you. But if you're not speaking the truth and you were taught a certain way, you have every right to challenge it, no matter what age it was. So that was a conflict with my upbringing as well, you know, through my walks of going to school as a young man and even, you know, going to churches, I always study at home and we always studied the Bible. So it, it was a, always was a clash with me, you know, when I was young. And so, yes, that was part, how can I say, of a challenging thing in my younger and my younger years of learning a little bit and having a little bit, how can I say, advantage from a lot of my peers, because I had the privilege to have my mom and dad and to be homeschooled while I was on my journey as a young man? Absolutely. Islam, Islam to that. And, you know, for 
for far too many, right? Of course, the, the, the dynamics aren't the same. And we pick up, you know, things as we go um, along and, you know, bad habits happen here and there. And from what I'm hearing from you, like the knowledge, as we are on this, you know, journey to the knowledge itself, experience and series that we have, knowledge was really a focal point in your home. You know, it wasn't okay, as I'm hearing, not to know, you know? So in any way, shape or form, you were going to be peeling back, looking deeper, trying to find out what was missing. You know, you were being groomed for that kind of experience. So what what would advice or what would you say, you know, just, you know, kind of just segmenting for a second, um, if that type of information isn't fed and maybe that type of direction, you know, as the Bible said, train up a child, you know, in a way that they go so that when they get older, you know, they might not veer off, but they might go in the direction that you were prepared them to go. Um, but for those that don't have that kind of direction, you know, what, what would you say now looking back, you know, for some children or somebody that may be watching this, um, that may be searching for those answers in their beginning to seek out knowledge? Great question, brother. Well, I think it's imperative for brothers like myself and you to attach to the young men in the community. And maybe we might not have the type of funding that we may need to teach it at a young age, but do it regardless, do it at the parks, do it now we have the internet. So reach out to those children, reach out to those elementary schools in our community, especially the so-called urban communities where the teachers look like us and offer, how can I say, offer our services. You know, always talk to the children passing by. And for me, it's being seen. Is wearing my national headdress. It's telling the kids who I am. It's almost like not being hidden anymore, where a lot of people act like it's some secret or so-called a secret society. But be in the forefront for the young people that may not have the resources to see you and go back in the communities. I know a lot of times we moved out of our community, which I have done, but now I'm making it uh, my message and my and my mission to go back in the community that I grew up in go back into those urban neighborhoods and offer my services, even go to the certain churches that's looking for this type of wisdom and the schools and even different organizations, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and even you know centers that have our little young men in lockup and even the prisons to go offer the services as young people so they can have knowledge of themselves and then they can start making better decisions. So for me, as being an older statesman, it's imperative for someone like me, if I if I was a young man, to go back in that community and attach myself to where you see the need be. I wish I had that with my older brothers, and you know they only did what they can do. No disrespect to my brothers and, and everything, but as a young man, you know you don't want to listen to too much to your dad. You know what I mean? No disrespect, that's your dad. But wouldn't it wouldn't it been great if your your brothers, your older brothers, was into the knowledge? With into the science and grooming you that way to where you and all your friends can be a part of it and it become popular. So for me and for myself as being a map and a guy and into knowledge yourself, I want to make it popular for the young kids. So I'm going back in my community and try to touch those no matter what happens, you know, and have that part of my community service. So I think that's important right now for a young man that's looking for knowledge or that's seeking is for us as older statesmen to attach ourselves to the communities that we came from. Islam. I mean, because when I was coming up, you know, you had different brothers in the neighborhood that, you know, that was of a different elk and maybe pull you to the side and say something to you here and there, right? But I don't see that today. I'm just going to keep it 100. I, like, I don't, I don't see that. So that means that I need to be that, basically. It's really what that is saying to me and that's what you're saying to us is that uh don't look too far you know look in the mirror um because you know we have a part to play um in the next generation's upbringing so gratitude for that so as we and i just wanted to take that side that side step because it was on me and i was like okay somebody watching this is going to be saying well what have i had at she you know some of the things that we need to do so just look up to some of them elders in your community you know that that may be there and if they're not there Reach out to the BBT. That's what I can say. Um, Absolutely. That, that note. So Islam to that. So 
again, I want to kind of align ourselves here and talk to directly the knowledge of self. And I would like to say to the audience is that I, I've come across a lot of times in my in my journeys that if you ask somebody what's the knowledge of self, if you ask 10 people, you probably get 10 different answers, right? <laughs> it's like, what's love? You know, kind of that analogy where everyone had their own kind of concept or makeup in their experience, what love is, um, what knowledge of self looks like um, to them, right? And for me, I could just give a little thing and just say like, knowledge always was taught to me as knowledge being the key, right? The foundation you know, of, all, of everything in existence. And that was a building block that we must have to cross before we get to that next journey and that next step in life. But from your perspective, what is knowledge of self? Good question, Noble. And you know, a lot of times when I hear different people talk about knowledge of self, and I try to tell people words have synonyms and just because we might say different words, we mean the same thing. So for me, Knowledge of self is peace. That's the first thing for me. A knowledge of self is peace and a clear understanding of who I am and what I am and what I'm not. So for me, knowledge of self is peace and the understanding who I am, who the creator has created me to be. Everything else, once you accept that, then you can go a little bit further and investigate because you will have a peace in mind to investigate the unknown. So for me, knowledge of self was first having peace and then being able to investigate who I was created. What is my name per se? What the laws consist of? So the first thing for me, knowledge of self was peace. And once I had peace, I was able to have a clear understanding and be willing to learn and be willing to investigate. So that's the example that I can give. The knowledge of self for me was peace, not something that, how can you say, oh, I'm mad or somebody lied to me because nobody lied to nothing. We just wasn't into the know. So for me, you know, a knowledge of self was peace. Once you get peace, then you can accept everything that you're going to learn without no biasness. It's long. And I can say to that too, I was looked at it like, you know, to know who you are on many different levels. But take an example in a layman's terms of when I say when we go to fill out a job application, first thing they ask you on the application is your name. So you need to know who you are if you're gonna apply for anything. And that works in your regular life as well. So that way you know you have the confidence and the the wherewithal to know that you have a certain level of lineage and legacy behind you that you can achieve great things. So absolutely, that's, that's definitely the uh, key key factor in there. So for you, see now as you become, you know, a teenager, maybe you enter into high school, right? And you know, high school is high school, and we got things going on. You got girls, you know, you got the you got the block, you know. You got you got sports, competition. You know who's one of survival of the fittest. You know, mm -hmm. and, and and I would like, if you will, to share um, something about your your neighborhood that you grew up Absolutely. in, and 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 your transition as you become a teenager out in the world. Absolutely, noble. I I would also like to add on to what you just said about knowledge yourself when you're applying for a job and all that. A lot of times we might not know who we are. Our parents might not know. Our parents might still use misnomers of Negro, black and color, you know, and those oh. things. So right. Right. when we don't know, I tell everyone, you can't get mad at your parent because they got us here. That's why we have to seek higher education and higher wisdom, no matter what type of education field it is when you have those questions, because oh. those questions can be answered. So that's where I said, First, having peace of who you are and who your mother and father have raised you to be and then go outside to seek those answers. But you can only get the answers if you know how to ask her the right question. You know, 
So that's another thing as well. When we filling out things and it got black and it got uh, European and all these other things pertaining to the SF 181 form. How are you going to know what to fill out if you don't know what answers? I mean, what questions to ask and how to investigate those things. So that part, I agree 100 percent as well. Now, the question that you asked me about being in high school and being in all that, man, I was just like any other young man, you know, into sports, you know, into some of the things, especially I was into the girls. I thought I was big daddy came back then. I had the little high top and all that, you know, all those yeah. things. Because of y'all too. <laughs> I did. Uh, I was under influence. You know, I was under influence of uh, a lot of things I shouldn't have been into, especially in my neighborhood. You know, it. You know, we. I had a lot of what they call doughboys. A lot of young people at a young age was hustling, so right. I got caught up in some of the wrong things at a young age. You know, and I shouldn't have been doing things, but like I said, I did. You know, I'm glad I got out of that. You know, with a little scrapes and scars. But I was brought up to be, you know, a student. All my elementary and middle school, I was an A student, high academia, soccer, baseball. I even went to Canusa for table tennis. But then as I got a little older, Noble Alonzo, I was attracted to certain things I shouldn't have been. And I let and I let that attraction kind of take advantage in my high school years. To where all the years you were a scholar student, then you get to high school and you're not a scholar no more. You know, wow. what's the wow. what's the difference? You know, wow. what happened? Where's the breaks? I can go back in retrospect and see where my life was halted. I don't like to make excuses. Even when I met some of my older siblings, it was OK for me to hang around them and skip school and try to hustle and do all those things to try to fit in which we all go through trying to find ourselves. So for me, I, it was a challenge, you know, cause I was always trying to prove myself. I was always trying to fit in. And so I had that dilemma, like most all young men, you know, but luckily, luckily from the grace of God, from the grace of Allah, I had my dad, I had my mom, I had a household of, of, of my mother and my father to kind of say, okay, to kind of allow me to make those mistakes. But then when I made those mistakes, they was there to teach me how to come out of that. So, mm. yeah, man, I, I I can say my high school, you know, Noble Alonzo, it was, it was learning. I, I learned so much all through my high school years because I wasn't the person that I should have been. You know, my upbringing that my father showed me, that my mother showed me, I slipped in high school. You know, I was recruited by the high school coach to play varsity basketball. I slipped by wanting to be one of the boys. And so it put a halt on a lot of things that I thought that I wanted to do, you know, that I knew I wanted to do, that my dad trained me to do. You know, a lot of my friends, I played high school basketball when Noble Alonzo went to the NBA. Mm. I was on that level. My friend Montin Cleese went to the NBA. My friend Charlie Bell went to the NBA. My friend Morris Peterson went to the NBA. Uh, Eddie Robertson went to the NBA. Uh, uh, they went to college, Antonio Smith. A lot of my friends went to the next level and a lot went to college and, and, and went to pros. And that's how my dad was training me. And I mm. slipped up. And so I have a lot of the same story as a lot of young men. But by the grace of God, man, and by the grace of my parents and the Holy Spirit, I was able to bounce back. Indeed, indeed. Gratitude and your grace to Allah for that. I mean, you know, uh, similar to what you said about your experience and trying to fit in, more or less, trying to not stand out um, when you become a teenager in high school in a certain circles and you get pulled in, you know, to certain things and it's your becoming, right? It's how, you know, now you're training kicks in some ways and for some it's slow to kick in it don't kick in for none for others and it's like mm -hmm. okay you find yourself picking up the pieces right and mm -hmm. trying to figure it out and do you do you have any recollection of when you may have had the aha moment to kind of like come back to yourself or was there 
a, 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 a maybe a conversation that was given to you and or an experience that may have you know kind of brought you back to where your purpose was leading you to absolutely no boy Alonzo. i always straddled the fence and said i can try to do this and all that but it really it really happened for me at a later state in my life at the at the age of 29 when my brother akil jelani goodman bay was took off this earth it really shook me up you know it really really questioned everything and my baby brother was a scholar student you know exchange student and all that so for me when my when when i when i lost my brother it was it was life changing i was like something at the end i had i said i knew i'm brilliant i knew i'm smart i don't want to you know i don't want to do something and go to prison or do something and get killed because i'm mad and angry so i sat down and i and i asked god man show me something and what he showed me is to give my life totally to the creator and that's what i did it, it took a while it took 29. you know even when i graduated high school i went to community college you know i tried to play sports i was i still had one foot in one foot out i went to other community colleges had one foot in one foot out i was just straddling the fence you know maintaining you know working you know still thinking i'm a player but my dad was always like it's, it's things better for you i'm gonna let you experience this and then when, like I said, when I lost my brother, everything had to change for me. The communication that I had with a lot of my childhood friends, I let it go. So many things I stopped. I gave myself totally to ministry. I, I stopped dealing with everyone and I gave my life to ministry. I said, I'm gonna learn something and I'm gonna thank God for everything, even the bad and the poor time. So for me, Noble Alonzo, it was losing my brother. You know, cause I thought I was Superman, you know, I'm like, I can get out of anything. But when I lost my brother, reality really, 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 it struck me, you know? And I was like, man, life is serious. And so for me, that aha moment, Noble Alonzo was me losing my brother. Islam and, and condolences. Again, you know, also condolences for that experience and the family and everyone. Um, you know, it appears that loss, and grief, you know, is a is a challenge in this human experience, and I, I don't think it's by accident. Um, it's that way. It's like finding a way to get through um, to knowing that you were once present, or someone that you really cared for was once present, and now no longer physically present. Mm -hmm. And that leads me like into my next question: Is how did your spirituality how did what you were taught and after you got over the anger and you know disappointment how did that spark or rekindle your zeal for knowledge yourself wow great question no boy alonzo it was just like i said having peace you know, because I could have went anyway. I could have went all overboard or I can go all the way to the right thing. It wasn't no in between for me. Mm. And so when I, I I got so much peace, I got so much understanding by giving my spirit totally to the creator. It, uh, mm. it, it rekindled the light in me. It showed me, say, hey, yeah, you talented in sports, but that's it. You, you, you have a brain. And so I knew I was smart. I went back to school. I started working out again. Mm. I started being honorable and honest to everything. You know, a lot of the things that I did wrong, I made it right. And so for me, man, it was just a total submission. I know it might sound cliche. I've been through all spiritual houses like a lot of my brothers and sisters. I was a minister at churches. I grew up in IDMR, which is my makeup. But you know, most of us in a, in a misnomer black community, the most things that's in the community is the church. It, it's not that many, it's not that many temples. It's not that many spiritual schools. The majority of in the black community is church. So I didn't want to stay away from the people that look like me, you know, that I went to school with and teachers and, and things like that. I implemented myself in it. And when I implemented myself in it, Alonzo, by studying and being able to contextualize my teachings and my ministry, I was able to teach in a fashion to make people aha, 
Like, like I, I see what he's talking about. I see what he's talking about. Like, uh, this is what the scriptures is for me. So, Noble Alonzo, for me, it was just a total submission. Like that, I just have to be honest. And it was, and it didn't have to do with no specific type of spirituality. The Holy Spirit said, just jump into it and I'll show you the way. I had to get out of God's way, Noble Alonzo. You know? Mm, I did. You had to get out of his way. Yes. Get out of his way. And, I, and, I, and I wanted to, uh, I can attest to that uh, as well. We do a marvelous job with setting our own self up, um, you know, walking right into your failure. A lot of things that we think are failure is learning lessons. So it's like yes. you take those, man, you know, those are learning lessons. So, you know, um, at this point, Sheik, when you become a man, you per se, per se, in your eyes, and coming out of a certain phase of your life, coming over grief, mm -hmm. go ahead, Noble. Yeah, I'm still so, not. Yeah, so basically, I was saying now, as you becoming an adult and more responsible, and you doing your uh, 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 everything you need to do to reach your next step and the next level where God is leading you, how how did you uh, find uh, someone to you know kind of take this journey with you? What was that like? How did you how did you meet a, a companion to do this life with? That that that's so funny, Noble. Actually, man, that's an amazing question. You know, I met I met my wife. I've been knowing my wife, but I, I got with my wife when I was in a dark place when my brother was, you know, had passed and I was in a dark place. My wife been with me all through my different walks of ministry, being an assistant pastor at two churches, going to college, you know, uh, uh, figuring myself out. So my wife been right there with me. And she sat up there and told me she's going to always be there with me. And she said, I had a higher calling. My wife called all this out. You know, she said, you have a higher calling. I'm going to be right there with you. You know, so for me, it was simple, you know, because I met my wife in a dark place. You know, I met my wife in a place where I needed help. Like I said, I was still going to college. My wife helped me get my bachelor's degree. My wife helped me get my master's degree by making me be committed. So for me, it was my wife. I, I, I have to be honest to help me get past that journey because yes, your mother and your father, once you get serious, they be your biggest supporters, which my mother and father is. But for me, it was my wife. It was that, it was that woman next to me that already had her own thing going on to be like, I'm gonna go through this journey with you. And she sat right next to me and she held my hand. Late up at night, I'm studying, you know, telling me, ministering to me, telling me that I'm this and I'm that and not to settle. And a lot of men don't have that mate that will minister to you and tell you that you are great. And once she started telling me that, I'm like, am I really? You know, she like, yeah, you don't see that. You don't see who your mother and your father are. You don't see how people gravitate to you. You don't see how ministers and preachers and, and youth gravitate to you. I just mm -hmm. didn't know it. And so for me, it was giving a part of myself to somebody else and letting them see the light in me and helping me, you know, build myself up. So I tell every man, just like the Bible says, a man that finds a wife, you find a good thing. So for me, it was getting married. For me, that, that helped me get to the level that I am now is getting married. You know, it might not be for everyone, but for me and for the man I am today, absolutely, my wife, absolutely. Islam, Islam, when we, by the grace of Allah, we, we have, we have her on and, and she could second all of that. She could second all of that, that journey. And I know that it sounds easy. You know, it sounds like something like, yeah, one night I just woke up and I, and we was, you know, we was connected and I know it wasn't like that. And right. when, you, when you, when you talk about how you had to give somebody else a piece of yourself, I mean, oh, yeah. listen. That right there is, uh, uh, man. Right yes, could, I agree. We could, we could just talk about giving giving uh, somebody a piece of yourself mm -hmm. and, and giving away and diminishing uh, diminishing that ego that you are in control. 
and that you yes. do everything and you do all things well. You know, yes. Uh, that 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 of course is a is a uh, false reality. Uh, a lot of us men um, walk around with and carry, you know, this this macho attitude, and you know, re- not realizing that we don't tap into our feminine qualities that we limit in ourselves. Yes. So you're all, you're all masculine over here, huh? So you you you, you, you oh you got the uh, uh, all the time. I said, well, wait a minute, because you're missing it. You know, we 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 don't, that's not our makeup. So that's a powerful, powerful point. And I hope that everyone that heard that understand coming from a sheep and a leader of men and women, that there is a point in time where you have to give up a part of yourself and serve or in service to what your destiny is calling for. And we may not even mm-hmm. see it. We may not even see it. Like, you know, you were, you were sent a lot, had someone right there in the bush, as they would say, um, to see those qualities in you and be able to put you in a place like we read and in the more science temple, you know, you have the one-on-ones and say, what's the closest place or the nearest place to, uh, 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 to meet a law? And we say, in the heart, right? And we know with the scriptures that, you know, that, that your wife is a help me. So we say that, you know, the one that a law sense for you will help you meet a law in the heart. It will help you meet your higher self and the best example of yourself. So we thank you for that that demonstration. That was absolutely marvelous. But what I want to say is that I want to probably close this first segment of it because I want to get into your idea of forming the BBT and the transition and how that came about. And I know that's going to be a, a powerful piece and yes. where, we, where we come to or where we are today. So but but for now, family, I want to send um, grace and peace to Sheik Kyrie for giving us a moment of his, uh, his illustrious time to just share some of his experience with us and his journey to a knowledge itself. And this is just part one, and we will be back for part two. So stay tuned for that. We want to say peace and love. And we do all things in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So we say peace and love, family. And I want to wow. thank you, brother, for taking time out your day for opening this platform for questions and answers for people can see this. You know, this is needed in our community. So I want to give you honors and I want to give you praises for taking time out your day, Noble, and, and creating something because everything starts with a thought. And we always want to wait for the right time and a perfect time. But it's no perfect time. It's when God put it on your heart to do it. And we have all the tools and the technology. So I give you honors, Noble, for stepping up. This is going to be big as we get into the series and we're going to do these different series. This is going to springboard to something amazing. So I just give you gratitude and love, Noble, for taking time out your day and interviewing little old me. I give you honors and gratitude. Gratitude and love, Susan, until we speak again. Yes, sir. Peace Peace and love. Peace. Peace.